One of the things that I feel the worst about in my life is when I hit a pedestrian when I was driving a car. I had dropped my daughter off at preschool and I was driving home and I was making a right turn at a place and the sun was in my eyes. It was coming over a house in the morning, just rising, and then there was a tree branch coming down and I was turning before I could like even know what was happening, you know, there was this loud sound, boom, boom, and this guy had come up on top of my um, windshield and, and on top of the hood of my car, and then I saw him sliding down, and I immediately braked, and I jumped out of the car, and I went, are you okay, or are you okay? Now, I wasn't going that fast, so I was probably going about, you know, 12 miles per hour, 10 or 12 miles per hour, um, and I said, are you okay, okay, and he's like, oh, and he was lying down on the ground and I said I can take you to the hospital like what do you need are you okay and um, another man who I knew from the neighborhood was walking down like he's like you can't take him to the hospital you have to call the police you have to get the insurance to settle out you know I know you want to be nice but this is just not what you do so we called the police and the police came and the police said you know don't worry about it this is an accident someone is in your eyes you know you don't need to worry but what was amazing about it was that literally within Less than 10 minutes, the police had shown up, uh, the ambulance had shown up, a fire department had shown up. Like There was three emergency vehicles that had shown up in less than 10 minutes to, to help this man in this situation. And I remember thinking to myself, like, we live in an amazing country. I live in an amazing city where, where there's so much help that happens so quickly. So it turns out that the guy that I hit, he was from the neighborhood, and he, he was a really nice guy, and I was like, oh, you know, I'm so sorry, and he said, oh, no, it's, it's not your fault, you couldn't see me, you know, I just had hip replacement surgery on both my hips, and he wasn't that old, he was pretty young, like maybe in his 20s, and he's like, I, I didn't see you, I thought you had seen me, so I started crossing the street, and then I couldn't get out of the way, because my hips were replaced, and <sighs> I felt so bad, though, and I wanted to go visit him in the hospital, but I wasn't allowed to because the way insurance works is you can't go see the person because then you're like, I don't know, admitting fault or you might say something that makes it harder for the insurance company. So I spent a lot of time talking and doing different insurance people and, and trying to figure out what was going to happen. I asked them, I said, you know, do I need to start putting money in the bank just in case like it goes over my insurance amount? The insurance amount that I had was $100,000. And they said, you know, don't worry about it, just just let it happen. But it literally took months, and I, I didn't hear anything. I didn't know what was happening. I couldn't see the guy. I couldn't talk to the guy. And, and I wanted to write him a note of apology. Eventually, the, it got all sorted out through insurance, um, and I, I didn't have to pay any extra. Um, but I did have my insurance rates did go up for two years. Um, the thing that's most interesting about this, though, is that about a year or two after this, I was reading a book um, called A Deadly Wandering, which was written about um, when texting became like pretty common in cars. And there's this case where this young man was, was texting while he was driving, and he you know, swerved across the road without realizing it, and he went head on into another car, and he killed two, uh, you know, two men who were on their way to work, these two scientists who worked in Utah at this laboratory and, and he killed them you know they were fathers and had families and it was devastating and the young man who hit the who hit the the car and killed them couldn't remember what had happened he, he couldn't remember that he was texting um, and charts saw the whole thing through the through the courts and what happens and tells all the backstory and you know eventually the man you know realizes what he did the young man and he takes responsibility for it and he actually dedicates his life to to educating others about the dangers of texting and driving I finished the end of this book and I was actually reading it in bed uh, and my wife was reading it at the same time and I, I finished the book and I closed it and I just started crying sobbing 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 and I turned to my wife and I said do you remember when I hit that man uh, when I was driving and she said yeah I do I said I was so ashamed I never told anybody, but I was on the phone when I hit him. I wasn't breaking a law because I was using Bluetooth, and in California, you're allowed to 
uh, talk on the phone, if it's Bluetooth, as long as you're not holding your phone. But in reading this book, it made it very clear that just being on your phone, even if the law says it's allowed with Bluetooth, is very distracting. It's, it's almost as dangerous as being drunk um, because when you are talking to somebody who is in your car, um, you have another set of eyes, and so you're not as distracted, and they might help you out. And so, you know, the, the accident rates don't go up that high when you're talking to somebody in your car. But when you're talking on the phone, you are distracted by that conversation, and it just impairs you terribly. So you might ask, like, well, why is it legal then to talk on your phone? Uh, and the answer is that the, the car companies and the phone companies um, have spent a lot of money to make sure that that law doesn't change. They want people to think it's safe to talk on their phone uh, while they're driving if it's Bluetooth. But it's not. It's not safe at all. I no longer talk on my phone when I'm driving. And I have this experience of remembering how terrifying it was to hit somebody and how terrible it was. And I was on the phone talking to my friend Joel. Um, at that time, I had just dropped off my daughter at preschool, and I was talking to him about, you know, the stuff that we talk about, and, and I was distracted. And even though the sun was in my eyes, and there was a tree branch that was obstructing my view, I am 100% certain that talking on the phone was also part of the problem. So I made a promise to my wife. I said, you know, I, I never told you because I was ashamed. I, I didn't even tell the policeman because I was ashamed. Um, you know, if I had been breaking the law, I, I would have told the policeman. Um, but because I wasn't breaking the law, I, I kind of let myself slide. And, and I'm ashamed of that, too. But I believe that I'm a much more honest person now. And, um, and that experience is something using mistakes that I want to learn from. So I don't talk on the phone, but it took me a while. I, I actually told my kids, you know, hey, if you ever see me touching my phone while I'm driving, I want you to say something. And they were young, you know, they were like five and seven. And it didn't happen right away. Like, I still struggled with it. So for a while, I didn't touch my phone, but then it creeped back in. And so sometimes I might, like, you know, adjust a map or adjust my music. And one time I caught myself doing it, and my kids were in the car, and I turned back and I was like, hey, how come you guys didn't say anything to me? And they said, well, <laughs> we've told you a couple times, and, and you just ignored us. You kept on doing it, and so we, we didn't think it meant anything to tell you anymore. And I just felt so terrible. Eventually, I got to the point where I could promise and mean it. I promised my brother, actually, um, you know, hey, I'm not going to touch my phone in the car when I'm driving. You know, I'm always going to pull over if I need to do something. Um, and, and since that time, you know, using mistakes, I am a much, much, much safer driver. So, if you are ever in the car and somebody else is driving, and they are using their phone. It's within your rights to tell them that you would like them to stop using their phone because they are putting your life at risk and they're putting other people's lives at risk. And it's like, you know, random chance. You could do that 20,000 times and maybe you never hit anybody. But that one time you do, it can really ruin your life and somebody else's life. And I happen to have had that one in whatever thousand chance and I've hit somebody. And I hope that maybe by telling this story, it'll help somebody else to avoid that situation. Thanks.